There's a lot of PlayStation 2 era platformers that it just seems that no one really knows about. Some of them are actually pretty decent, while others are not. And that brings us to Scalar, a PS2 era platformer that I feel no one's really heard about. Scalar was made by Artificial Mind and Movement. Who's that? A company that made these games. Yeah, not so great a track record. These guys started off as behavior entertainment. You might know them as the people behind Jersey Devil on PS1. It wasn't long before they were merged and retitled Artificial Mind and Movement, or A2M for short. Anyway, if there was a movie or TV show that needed a half-assed tie-in game, you'd call these guys. Kim Possible, Teen Titans, Ice Age, Monsters, Inc., whatever it was, you knew the drill. Make the call, they make the game, bada bing. Now, that's not to say that's all they did. If they weren't working on the newest Sweet Life of Zack and Cody DS game, they were creating something original. Like Wet. Wasn't that game alright? I don't remember. Some people liked it, some people didn't. I never played it. I was too busy playing Stranglehold in 2009. They changed the name back to Behavior Entertainment in 2010 after the higher-ups kept complaining about the abbreviation A2M. You never go ass to mouth! No, I'm, I'm not screwing with you. That's... That, that is the reason. These guys didn't make a whole lot of original games when they went by that name. In fact, I only really count two, Wet and Scalar. Looking at the game's cover, it kind of speaks to me as a little bit of a spiral ripoff. That's at least what I first thought when I saw the thing. But surprisingly enough, coming from the company that it did, there's actually a lot more to it than that. So what are we waiting for? Let's just start the game already. Scalar starts off with a CG cutscene. Bobby Jenkins, and yes, that's actually his name, is being interrogated and tortured by this military guy. See, Bobby's a big lizard enthusiast, and he's always protesting around town to save lizards from the big evil corporate dudes. Bobby's also really funny, cracking a wise-ass joke every chance he gets. Are you sure your name isn't Captain Bootlick? Christ, this kid's even worse than Gex. Bobby then notices the big evil corporate dude standing in the next room. It seems as if for some reason they've all been turned into giant lizard people. Their plan is to open up a portal to another dimension where they can obtain lizard eggs, make them hatch into super soldiers, and then take over the world, or the multiverse as they called it. I don't know. Their plan is then completely foiled when Sergeant Big Bud accidentally hits the turn Bobby into a lizard switch and Bobby is then transformed into his alter ego Scalar. The portal then opens and Scalar makes a break for it. We then wake up in this alternate lizard reality and this is where the gameplay begins. Scalar's a 3D platformer. You'll find yourself jumping platform to platform with the occasional combat. It's nothing too big to wrap your head around. Scalar sports a double jump which is real dang handy for leaping extra distances or landing in a more precise spot. It doesn't feel too bad, it's definitely better than Rough Triggers, which felt completely impactless, yet was so broken you could skip chunks of levels with it, but I can't help but to feel it still lacks impact. A double jump in games like Ratchet and Clank feels really good because Ratchet does a nice little front flip, uh, an extra little animation just to visually confirm the action we've just made him do. Scalar just kinda waves his arms and elevates a couple more feet. It's not really the best double jump in the world, but it still gets things done reasonably well. Scalar can also attack, and before I have dramatic flashbacks to Vex, Tie 3, or Rough Trigger with their lukewarm attempts at integrating a combat system into a platformer, I was pleased to realize that it keeps things simple. Your attack is just a three-hit combo, nothing more, nothing less. Simple, like Mario or Banjo, just the way I like it. You also have a tongue whip attack that can take out weaker enemies and can reel in items like health drops and whatnot. The majority of the time, I was just using a tongue attack to wipe out enemies. It's a lot faster, safer, and the auto-targeting does a pretty swell job of hitting what I actually want to hit. Punching is something you'll have to do with the larger enemies, though. If this is the case, then a tongue attack might be able to stun the enemy, allowing you to make a safe blow without getting hit. You also have this turbocharged bomb attack, which will wipe out all the enemies on the screen, though it only stuns stronger enemies in later levels, which is still pretty helpful. You'll get one of these bomb shock attacks every time you charge up your energy meter. You can do this by grinding on Vines you'll find scattered throughout the levels. Grinding in this game is really similar to grinding in Ratchet and Clank. You don't really control your forward momentum at all, but you just gotta jump over the stuff the game throws at you. While I found them kinda boring at first, they actually get really challenging later on. You'll soon be jumping, ducking, and swapping rails in quick succession. I gotta admit, I really enjoyed these bits. I would even argue that I liked them more than Ratchet and Clank's grinding segments. That's a part of those games I always found kinda dull. There just isn't enough player input to make it that fun for 
for me. But in Scalar, it's so fast-paced, there's a lot of rapid button input, and they get pretty dang challenging. I really like it. Another way the game's a little similar to Ratchet and Clank is how the currency works. You'll collect these orb things called clockies by smashing up all the stuff in the environment. They all pour out, and you hear the satisfying bings of varying pitch as they're added to your score. Exampling back to Ratchet and Clank, the clunking of all the bolts you pick up, it just feels really good. Using the clockies, you can purchase upgrades for Scalar. None of them are entirely new abilities, but rather buffs for your already existing ones. Things like extra health slots, extra bomb slots, double the damage, you pretty much get the picture. Similarly to Gex, you can also climb up certain walls, though it's nowhere near as fast-paced or fun. You'll also learn a camouflage move that'll cloak you from enemies. With this, you can safely walk over monster-infested swamp areas and approach certain dangerous obstacles without setting them off. Scalar overall has some pretty great controls. He's got a good amount of weight to him, and his moveset is kept simple, nothing too elaborate. I think A2M knew they probably wouldn't do too well with an ambitious control design, so they kept it minimalistic. That's something I can really appreciate after having a really hard time getting the wall jump to work in Vex. This paired with good animation using a gratifying amount of squash and stretch creates a character that's both easy and satisfying to handle. The objective in Scalar Scalar is to collect all of those eggs that Sergeant Big Butt wanted. You discover this when you run into Leon, another lizard dude. Scalar mentions that Leon was also his father's name. That was my father's name. He left us when I was young. Oh, that's rough, kid. Wow, what a coincidence that his name is Leon and he's also not your dad. There will be no way a plot twist in which he turns out to be your dad. Wow, jokes aside, like, this this instruction manual is really sick. Like, look at it. It's in full color. It's got every enemy in the game. They're completely color and illustrated, and it's got, like, a little description for every single one. I just really wanted to take a moment to appreciate that. That's really something there. You'll find an egg at the end of each level. I guess you could think of them as this game's equivalent of stars or jiggies. There isn't that many of them, though, as the levels don't really have many objectives. There's only 20 eggs in the game, so don't be expecting an expansive amount of levels. They're all fairly linear, too. You go straight, get to the end, win the level. The egg will just be sitting atop a pedestal waiting for you there. Sometimes it's a fork at the beginning with two paths, each leading to their own egg. But many levels grant scale the ability to transform into a unique character. There's five in total. Firstly, we have this little bomb critter dude. This guy can use bombs, drop them with the B button, bowl them across the ground with the X button, and then detonate them by pressing a button again. This guy's great for taking out hordes of enemies. There's really something satisfying about rolling a bomb over and timing the explosion just right in the middle to wipe them all out. The second transformation is this ball dude that rolls around. You can speed up with the B button and activate your spikes with the R button. You'll mostly use this one for rolling a across tracks and navigating courses as quickly as possible. Fast-paced, fun, sometimes a little frustrating with how bad the knockback is if you mess up, but still had a lot of fun with these levels. The third form is this flying creature. It's not super exciting. You fly around and shoot projectiles, that's about it. You don't use it long, so it doesn't really overstay its welcome either. Fourth one is this reptile that can shoot projectiles. I guess you could call him a projectile reptile. You'll find yourself using this one a lot in the later stages. You'll need him for taking out airborne enemies, hitting switches, and etc. You can also aim in first person mode similar to how Kazooie would fire her eggs. For the first person firing mode, there's an aim assist which makes precise aiming a lot smoother. And lastly, there's this penguin guy who can swim in the water. Like the flying one, you don't use him much, it's not too exciting, and he's only in the one level. If I had to make a comparison, I'd say it's almost like the transformations in Banjo-Tooie which granted you extra abilities. Though in Scalar, you can swap back and forth with the push of a button. The alternate forms never have a double jump, so it's still worthwhile to play a Scalar during the platforming segments. I like this system a lot. It adds a decent variety to the gameplay without having it stray too far from its core design as a platformer. Some of the forms do a tad, but like I said, they don't overstay their welcome. One thing I really like about Scalar is how consistent it is with its design. For the most part, it knows it's a platformer and it doesn't try to make you do anything that strays from that. I gotta stop bringing this game back up, but Ty 3 loved doing that, making you do this lame cart race or gunplane missions that were not only not fun, but but also mandatory for beating the game. Scalar is also consistently decent. Vex, while a solid game about 70 or 60% of the time, still had a lot of instances of clunky or bad level design that made me mad. Really, really mad. Scalar doesn't have that. Well, actually, there's one big exception. This boss fight can go to hell. Burn in hell. And forever remain in hell. Oh my lord, this stupid boss fight. 
Okay, I'm willing to forgive the game for those two brief turret sections. There's only two of them, they're right before two of the levels, one midway through the game and one at the very end. They're really not very fun, but at least they're not too difficult and they don't last long. This boss fight though not only utilizes this same boring on-rails turret setup, but it's also infuriatingly hard. And it's long! This thing is an endurance run of firing not only precisely at the boss's big glowing weak points, but also at all of those relentless projectiles that will kill you if you mess up in the slightest. All the while, the camera shakes around violently, making that very hard to do. The other boss fights are on land, they play completely like the rest of the game, and while they might not be the most creative or fun boss fights, they're at least all passable. This one, on the other hand, is asking you to do something outside of your comfort zone that you don't want to do for a lot longer than you want to do it. It's like, that's like rule one. Rule one of making a platforming game, you don't put in a turret section. Nobody likes turret sections. Not even when you're playing a game that's about shooting people. Do people like turret sections? I'm talking to you, Rayman 3. Your last boss sucks. While we're still talking about the boss fights, I'll at least mention one I did really like. It's one of the later ones where you fight this giant lizard dude. You circle around him on the railings, dodging his fiery breath and returning fire every chance you get. This one's hard too, but not in a way that makes me angry. Doing it each time, I learn the pattern, I understand what it is I'm supposed to do, and I can finish him off without a hitch. Unlike the other one, where I know what to do, it's just that I can't do it because of poopy game design. So that's just one of my two big criticisms of this game. The other one, I, I don't know why they did this. I, I really don't know why they did this. This happens multiple times in every single level, but you'll be walking along and boom, this force field appears out of nowhere, locking you into an area where you'll just have to defeat all the enemies so you can advance. I really don't know why they do this. It happens a lot and it halts the gameplay completely. I really can't call it anything other than padding. I mean, with the simple combat, it's not super difficult, it's just, I I don't know why they do it. It doesn't add anything, and it's not particularly fun either. And in the last two levels, there's arena segments that had me pulling my hair out because of how hard they were. They eventually just try to make it really challenging by throwing way too many enemies at you all at once. And it's almost impossible to attack without being attacked because there's a window of vulnerability between your attacks. Pro tip for the later arena bits, make sure you have those bombs charged up because they are a lifesaver. But yeah, those are the two things in this game I really didn't like. So why don't we talk about something I really do like about this game, the presentation. This game is very colorful and very detailed. There's a lot of fauna and elaborate visual design in each level. Particle effects swim through the air and bright vibrant colors just fill this world with life. There's also these little dude things floating around. They don't, they don't do anything, but they're just there to breathe character into this game. For its time, Scalar is a really pretty game. There is easily a high level of production value here. In fact, there's a unique animation for every single egg Scalar finds. Can you imagine if every time Mario got a star, he did a different victory pose? Well, there's 20 eggs, not 120, but it's still awesome to see detail put into something like that. Now, while I adore the game's simplicity and controls, it does suffer a tad from simplicity and level structure. There's not much variety in Scalar. In fact, to complete the game, you have to collect every single egg, given there's only 20. Unlike Vex or most other collect-a-thon platformers, there's no opportunities to pick and choose your own objectives. You're not given many, so you'll just have to do all of them. The levels themselves are also subject to slightly repetitive design. Even with the alternate forms to change things up, you're still making that same kind of platform jump by putting that same bomb in the same place or jumping across a very similar set of crumbling platforms platforms over and over. Scalar's got great controls, don't get me wrong, and it's got a fantastic selection of different moves you can do, but the level design is just something I honestly found kind of lacking. What I think it really boils down to is the lack of ambition, and that's surprising to see from a company like this. A lot of games created by B-rated dev teams have all these big crazy ideas they want to put in the game, and they just... They don't realize that they don't have the manpower or the talent to make those ideas work. I think Vex was victim to similar ambition. Some of the stuff they wanted to put in that game just 
didn't really work super well. What I see here is a company that understands their limits. They know they're not going to be able to make the next big Mario game, so they're not going to bother trying. They're just going to keep things simple and make a decent experience. It might get a tad stale at times, but it rarely falls short of being good. Let me compare it to Vex one last time. Scalar is consistently good, for the most part, other than that stupid boss battle, though it's not quite as fun as Vex. Now, that said, Vex's high points are better than Scalar's consistent point, but it suffers from way more dips in quality. And that's because the developers of Vex were a lot more ambitious and tried a lot of things that didn't necessarily always work, while Scalar's developers always play it safe. There weren't very many risks taken here with Scalar, so while it does lack the problems Vex had, it also lacks the moments of brilliance that were in Vex. So if you're looking for a solid experience, check out Scalar. It's definitely underrated and not half bad, but most of all, it knows its limits. After playing so many games that try to do things that developers just don't really know how to do, that's at least something I can appreciate. So, what are you waiting for? Let's just play the game already. I'm never gonna find that. That went behind my TV. I'm never gonna find that. <laughs>